Covalent bonds are the strongest type of bonds. And the reason why they're so strong is because covalent bonds are when atoms share a pair of electrons. So why would electrons be willing, or sorry, why would atoms be willing to share electrons? Well, remember that valence shell and how it's full with eight electrons? Atoms really like to be full, like in quotes, of course. Um, what I mean by that is that they're more stable when they're full. And so they're willing to interact with other atoms in order to reach that full state. So atoms that do not have full valence shells will be the kind of atoms that are willing to be in covalent bonds. There's uh, single covalent bonds when atoms share one pair of electrons. There is uh, double covalent bonds when two atoms share two pairs of electrons, and there's even triple bonds, which we won't see very often, but does occur in nitrogen uh, gas. And so let me get the pen here, show you what I mean. So N2, which is in our atmosphere, is a triple bond between nitrogen. So all of these kinds of bonds can occur. So let's explore a covalent bond a little bit more. So the octet rule is this valence shell thing that I was talking about. So remember that the valence shell is the outermost shell. And for the most part, and this is where the name octet comes from, it's about having eight electrons. Octet means eight. The only exception is the first shell, which is full with two electrons. Okay, so atoms want to get to a full valent shell. The first shell is full with two electrons. The second shell is full with eight electrons. So they will bond in order to make each other feel full. So notice I said feel full. There's not actually going to be any extra electrons, but by sharing, they're going to feel like they have more electrons. So let's look at this example. Hydrogen has one electron in its outermost shell. This is the first shell. So this shell will be full with two electrons, but it only has one, okay? Fluorine, on the other hand, has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven electrons, right? And it needs eight electrons to be full. Okay, so fluorine and hydrogen are both one electron away from feeling full. So if they get close together in space, and so notice that this, this is, can only happen if a fluorine atom bumps into a hydrogen atom. But if this one gets close to this one, this space here is removed, then that area can overlap. So this electron now is overlapping with the same space as this electron. So this is now a shared pair or we could say that two electrons are being shared. So now hydrogen feels like it has one, two electrons, and fluorine feels like it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons. So both hydrogen and fluorine now feel full. Hydrogen feels like it has two electrons. Fluorine feels like it has eight electrons even though they're still the exact same amount of electrons that we started with. This is an example of a double bond that occurs between oxygen. Same idea. Oxygen has six electrons in its valence shell, so it needs two more to feel full. And so one way to achieve this is to share two pairs of electrons. So here's the two electrons. Here's another two electrons here. So oxygen has one, two, three, four, five, six. Again, if two oxygens get close together, so get rid of this space, the space has to get rid of, be gotten rid of, they get close together, then this space can overlap, and they're now sharing one, two, three, four, Two pairs are shared, and remember two pairs would be the same thing as four electrons being shared. 
if they're sharing those four electrons, then this oxygen feels like it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this oxygen feels like it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So both oxygens now feel full, even though I have the same number of electrons. And in this case, this is a double bond. So O double bonded to another O, and this is what you know of as oxygen gas. The four elements that make up living things, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and carbon, all make covalent bonds. And so we're going to see lots of covalent bonds in biology. Hydrogen has one uh, electron in its valence shell. It's one away from feeling full, so it will form up to one bond. So you'll always see hydrogen only in single bonds. Oxygen has six valence electrons, so it's two away. That means it can form up to two bonds. So here we see oxygen making two bonds by having a double bond. In water, we see oxygen have two bonds by having two single bonds. Okay, so you can get to two either way. Nitrogen has five electrons in its valence shell, so that means it's three away. So nitrogen, let me go here, I said earlier can be triple bonded, but I can also have three single bonds on nitrogen. This is ammonia that I'm drawing here. The last one here is carbon. Carbon has one, two, three, four valence electrons. That means it can form four bonds. So carbon can be bonded to four different things. So for example, it might be bonded to four different hydrogens. This is methane, um, methane gas you maybe have heard of.